In this video, we'll introduce some techniques to bound the probabilities of extreme values, such as Markov and Chebyshev's inequality, and we'll use these to prove the weak law of large numbers. So suppose that the score distribution of an exam is modeled by a random variable with range from 0 to 110 for extra credit. So if the average was 50, at most what percentage of the class could have gotten 100 or higher? Well, it's one half. Because if more than half the class got 100, then the average would already be greater than 50, which is impossible, even if everyone else got zeros. So what we did was we took the average and divided it by 100, and that's an upper bound on the probability that x is at least 100. So what if the average was 25? Well, it's one fourth, because if more than one fourth of the class got 100, then the average would already be 25, even or more than 25, even if everyone else got zeros. So again, we took the average and divided by 100. But what if you could get a negative score? Then there's no bound, because you could have the vast majority of people get 100, but yet if someone gets like negative 1 trillion, then that could push the average way down below what is right. Okay, so in general, if x is a non-negative random variable and k is greater than 0, Markov's inequality says that the probability that x is at least k is upper bounded by the expected value of x divided by k. So alternatively, the probability that x is at least k times the mean is upper bounded by 1 over k. Okay, so let's prove Markov's inequality. So again, let's start with the expected value of x. So we can apply the definition of expectation, but we need to use the fact that x is non-negative, so it must be at least 0. So we only need to integrate from 0 to infinity because those are the possible values of x. It's non-negative. We integrate of x times the density at x. Okay, so let's split the integral into two parts. One is from 0 to k, the other is from k to infinity. Now, because x is non-negative and densities are also non-negative, so therefore this whole left term here is non-negative. And therefore, if we remove it, that only makes the sum smaller. So let's remove it, and now notice that this sum is greater than what it would be if I remove this term. And again, uh, now the smallest value of x in this range is k, because it goes from k to infinity. So if we replace x with k, that will only make things smaller all the time, because densities are non-negative. Okay, and then pull out the k, and now we have integral from k to infinity of the density of x. And that's just the probability that x is greater than or equal to k. And rearranging gives us Markov's inequality. So now let's talk about Chebyshev's inequality. So if x is any random variable with mean mu and finite variance, so notice that now if we know the variance, we can get a tighter bound. So that's the probability that x differs from the mean by more than alpha is at most variance of x divided by alpha squared. You can also write this in terms of number of standard deviations. So if k is greater than zero, the probability that k, sorry, that x is k standard deviations or more away from the mean is upper bounded by one over k squared. So here, uh, the probability that x is more than two standard deviations, two sigma, away from the mean, is at most 1 over 2 squared. So that's the upper bound on the probability in, this, in these tails. Okay, so now let's use Markov's inequality to prove Chebyshev's inequality. So let's start from the left side of Chebyshev's inequality. So we need to use the fact that x minus mu squared is a non-negative random variable. Anything squared is non-negative. So first, let's start with the left side of Chebyshev's inequality, then square both sides here. And now, because x minus mu squared is non-negative, so we can actually apply Markov's inequality on x minus mu squared, so this on this thing as x. So now, by Markov's inequality, we get this expression, expected value of x minus mu squared divided by alpha squared. And because the top is just the definition of variance, so replace that with variance of x, and voila, we've proved Chebyshev's inequality. So now let's use it to prove the weak law of large numbers. And again, the weak law of large numbers says that if x1 through xn are a sequence of id random variables with mean mu, and xn bar is a sample mean, then xn bar converges in probability to mu, mu, or as n grows to infinity, the probability that the sample mean is more than epsilon away from the true mean goes to zero. So the proof is just, so first recall that the expectation of the sample mean is mu and the variance is sigma squared over n. So by Chebyshev's inequality, the probability that the sample mean differs from the true mean by more than epsilon is upper bounded by the variance of the sample mean divided by epsilon squared. But the variance of the sample mean is just sigma squared over n there, so let's plug that in. And notice, notice that this goes to zero as n grows to infinity, so that proves the weak law of large numbers. Thank you.